you see sort of very jocular, like with a bunch of fighting women and men. Actually, uh, all the people she's speaking to are uh, women. You see there's a huge group of women that have like swords at their side, bows and arrows, uh, uh, very light armor, like sort of, you know, mm -hmm. naval armor. Uh, and you see that she's got her one leg up on the lip of a carriage uh, is maybe the most stunning woman you've ever seen. Um, uh, she is wearing a cap. She has short cut hair swept back, kind of like that princely hair, um, and a long captain's jacket. With that nat 20, this is Annabelle Cheddar. Uh, Annabelle Cheddar was stripped of her title and could not inherit the throne and become princess of the Dairy Islands. Um, so she would be the rightful heir, but something happened. And with a nat 20, I will tell you, and you can decide if you heard this publicly or privately. Great. Um, uh, she refused to marry. Sick. That's <laughs> awesome. I love her. Uh, you see that she's just jo uh, laughing it up with soldiers. You see that there's a look around her of such freedom. And you see someone who, unlike the stints you guys have done, actually got away. Fuck. Uh, I'm gonna go up to her and say in Lakra, just like as chill as I can, like, sup, I'm Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Uh, you see, uh, go ahead and make a persuade, uh, make a flat charisma check for me. <laughs> I'm not the most charismatic. It's a 13. 13. You see, she looks over at you and goes, right. Is it just that then, Ruby? No last name. I notice there's a circle on your head. Oh, this stupid thing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you use uh, a swirl board into like reaction leap and catch the circle. <laughs> yeah, just, you dropped this. Oh, I mean, I, I have to wear it. Yeah, I'm Ruby Rocks. Nice to meet you. What's your name? Right. Well, your Who highness. You? What? I don't know who you are. So. You just came up to introduce yourself to a stranger. I went in comedy. I put on peasant's clothes and I'm like, put Ruby on. Rocks. <laughs> when? Cool, so you take a full 10 and a half minutes to do that. Ruby right? Rocks, can I get your autograph? LePan, you see furiously in the carriage is Jet changing it to. I'm reading in here. <laughs> Please stop. I'm holding the door of the carriage closed. I'm, I don't feel comfortable. <laughs> Uh, you see that uh, Annabelle looks at you and says, Right, well, Your Highness, mm -hmm. I'm Captain Annabelle Cheddar. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Oh, it's nice to meet you. You're a captain? Aye, Captain of the Colby. Cool, yeah, we're just here because my dad. Uh, for the, are you here for the, the thing, the Tony? Right, the tournament. Aye, I'll be fighting in the melee. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, that, cool. That's quite a ball you've got on your back there. I imagine oh, you'll yeah. be fighting in the archery competition. Oh no, yeah, this is this is uh, um, <laughs> this is sour scratch. It's, it was my aunt's. Aye, the puckering ball. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I dare not speak its name lest I find myself on your wrong side, your highness. Oh, I don't think you will. I'm. Mean, will you? Anyway, I gotta go. <laughs> Is Annabelle Can I drunkenly uh, fall and land? And like... Yeah, I try to grab Liam before. Ah! I, I was. Um, uh, you see that uh, as you start to fall, um, you see that uh, Annabelle uh, twirls you around no! uh, into like a dance move and says, "You right there. Looks like you can't hold your cups." Oh yeah, I'm sorry about that. So. You're wearing a full backpack full of like pans and lanterns and such, and we're here in a fancy party. Oh yeah, I'm always prepared. I grew up in the Great Stone Candy Mountains. Aye, the Great Stone Candy Mountains, is that true? Mm -hmm. You're jawing jawbreakers, boy. Oh uh, yeah, that's my dad. Aye, fearsome foe. I saw him once when I was a wee girl, only about four years of age. Mm -hmm. He was a mighty warrior. That's cool. Chin like a cliff. Mm-hmm, yeah. Uh, yeah, he he gets mad uh, pretty easily, so I always have to keep my seeds in a different room. <laughs> you have to do your what? Seeds in a different room? I, well, yeah, yeah, I'm just like kind of, I'm really into like, you know, growing stuff, and I like to keep a seed from each place that I go. Not a big war guy, that's what I'm trying to say. 
Right? Well, uh, I can't say anyone should be a big war guy. Mm. Uh, war is hell. Um, right, well, mm. I'll tell you what. Um, uh, you see she looks over at you, Theo, and says, uh, perhaps we should get the young master Wilhelmina <laughs> to, uh, to some sort of uh, horizontal position, probably on his side. It's not a bad idea. I'm why drinking more Li wine. <laughs> Liam, why don't we do water for a second? Mm. Annabelle, I honor your claim to the cheese throne, and I, also an heir who has decided not to wed. What? Think that we should show these fools a real fucking fight. Be my ally so that you and I can put on a fucking good unmarried show. Okay. Uh, Jeez Louise. Having never introduced yourself to this woman, you have announced her greatest shame to the assembled <laughs> tournament. Go ahead and give me persuasion with disadvantage. I didn't know that was the greatest shame. I got a nat 20 though. Oh, but, but disadvantage. Anna, you, you say a lot of real personal <laughs> shit as out loud as anyone right. can say in front of the head of a global church. Um, uh, Annabelle looks at you. Um, I'm proud of the fact that I'm not married, so whatever. Uh, Annabelle looks at you, there, a, an enormous fucking gasp goes up in the audience as you, the heir of Candia, openly announce that you will not wed. <laughs> what an incredible shame you've brought to your houses. Um, you, uh, uh, cool. Uh, Annabelle yeah. gets teary-eyed and straightens up her back and salutes you with her saber. Salutes me. With her saber and nods her head. Uh, she is right, extremely maybe. emotionally charged that you've brought this up, but um, uh, right. she she looks as though um, she, I mean, rolling into 17. Uh, it looks like she is um, uh, shocked and awed by your bravery and speaking aloud something that she's been carrying as a point of shame for a long time and um, looks deeply touched by your camaraderie. Okay. If Annabelle, if yeah, Annabelle was fine, though, I mean, was that the end of, she's just... Really um, uh, I mean, look, like, all this crazy, like, a crazy political event happened over here, the craziest political event happened okay, over here, seems... and then also you, like a fucking long-forgotten memory, uh, announced her personal shit everywhere. Okay. I guess she looks happy that an assassination almost happened so that everyone forgot when her fucking laundry got aired in front of the entire Okay, kingdom. then I do want to deeply apologize to her and okay, say, cool. I'm sorry, I think I'm more at peace with, uh, with, with where I stand than you are, and I misjudge that situation. Your Highness, your father was just almost killed in front of both of us. You are young and you've spent your whole life in a kingdom which is very permissive about most things. I do not fault you for that. I would ask that in the future, if you respect someone, you will keep their honor by keeping their business on the other side of your mouth. I want you to understand that I actually thought it was really badass that you did it, so I thought I was speaking your honor when I said that. She thinks for a moment, leans in very close so that her cheek is almost touching your cheek and whispers into your ear, I thought it was badass too. I just don't like to talk about it. Duly noted. You see that Annabelle walks over, uh, puts her hand on Primzy's shoulder. Um, she hasn't introduced herself really to, to Amethyst yet. Um, she looks at you. Uh, Who is this, sorry? Annabelle. Uh, this is this is uh, Annabelle Cheddar. Um, she looks up at you and says, um, "Your Majesty, I have not had the honor of your uh, meeting, but I am Captain Annabelle Cheddar. Um, my father, when he was alive, spoke of you more highly than any man, and um, I had hoped that the circumstances of our meeting would be different, but it is." an honor to, if even for a moment, uh, have shared a tournament ground with you. Well, it's an honor to meet you as well. Your father was a great man, and you were a great fighter. I try, but... I mean, you've won the admiration of my daughters. You see, she's You should not... have seen her thighs out there. Thighs? Mm. Yeah. Her yeah. thighs? <laughs> Right. Yeah, Look, did we just did we they just talk about the permissive candy and attitudes? Is it called is it either it's either like, my marriage or status or my thighs? I'm sorry, we I thought that your thighs were weapons. You. I thought it was like complimenting yeah. your, your, your sword. highness. My thighs are weapons. <laughs> 
Well, I just died. Uh, it was very nice to meet you. I'm sure we'll have reason to speak again soon. Your Majesty, an honor. I'm at your service. Um, but if you wish, but I believe. Uh, and you see that there's another person posted up here as well, uh, who's Annabelle Cheddar. Okay. Um, uh, Annabelle uh, nods to you and says, you're right, well, my fellow champions, uh, how do you find yourself? Oh, right. she got it. Um, she looks over at you and says, right, the Cerisian fellow ran out of the ring disqualifying himself. Actually, everyone in the other ring left the ring before the match was called, wow. so that's <laughs> immediately disqualifying. And then uh, the other <laughs> the part the two, of your... <laughs> it says, it says, and then Grissini dropped his weapon, and the French fry did as well, which and went his pants. And his pants. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like... Uh, it's, and then, uh, and then the only other, so the only other melee combatant that kept her weapon in her hand verbally conceded the match to me. <laughs> and, and I'm glad I honored my alliance. <laughs> so, right, well, this is the most humiliating victory I've ever, <laughs> I've ever had. Uh, but you know, the Dairy Islands hey. don't have much, so I'll take it. It's, it's uh, no small prize. Um, I'm sure the uh, uh, outcome would have been the same either way. Hey. I don't... Um... <laughs> You're not there. Um, sure, this is me as Emily saying it. <laughs> so what made you refuse to get married? <laughs> right, look, I, some, um, we're at court. Tell me of... I just thought maybe... What? <laughs> How... Look. Who Hello. said... Hi, I'm, I'm so Annabelle. I'm it's a sorry. pleasure to meet you. <laughs> What's your favorite color, you oh, daft little Oh my god, you got it, sorry. Like, yeah. There's an order to these kind of like... We sincere on behalf I'm of all sorry. of I'm sorry, I'm I was just, I thought I was picking up where we left off. <laughs> where we left <laughs> off? Was you were blasted out of your gourd on wine? No, And I, I thought you were about I, to I, fuck I, that avocado lad. I meant, I meant the, the we as in all of us <laughs> at the tournament. <laughs> Where, can where I we left the tournament was your cousin <laughs> getting almost <laughs> murdered You're by an insane... Up for this. Yeah, give me disadvantage. Uh, <laughs> oh, already got a two. Let's see what the one is. Disadvantage, disadvantage what? Uh, uh, charisma. My lord. Nat 20! But you have a yeah, so but what's your, a literal zero. A literal zero? A number not even on the die. Um, she was like, wait, look, I want to be clear. <laughs> There's something very deeply wrong with you. What? I I'm not saying anything that should come as a surprise. <laughs> I no. She's I just, right. Yeah. I mean, you have a lot. Here's my here's my question. I'm looking at you and I'm sizing you up <laughs> as someone who knows that they're bad with people. Yeah. You know that about yourself. I right? do. And so knowing that about yourself, what most people would do saying, hey, I'm not that charming, yeah. mm -hmm. is they would tend to pipe down. You walked into a room and just led with the loudest declaration of someone else's personal You know, business. I just, I got spoiled, okay? <laughs> I was left out for a large part of my life. I'm really on a hot streak right now. I've been included in almost everything that's come up around me. <laughs> this has never happened to me before, so I'm just trying to ride that wave, okay, sister? You have to understand, there are a lot of um, turd siblings in his family. I, I understand. Yeah. Look, every kingdom has their various, you know, exclaves, rebel lords, places that haven't paid their taxes to the, the Concord. You know, the Concord's only exists for 20 years. It's not, it's not unanimous. It's, you know, something like 80 or 90% of Calorum has given over fealty. But just because you live outside of the borders of what we consider the civilized world, just, I don't know, it's just common courtesy. What do you do? Do you read a, you read a book, you listen? Listen to someone speak about how to be good with people? What are you... Count Leo. I, get, I, get. I just, I'm looking for some practical pointers here, hey, okay? How about this? How about this? Right. In the future, start with... Um, when you're meeting a person, uh -huh. pick one detail mm -hmm. of something not on their body or how they look on their face, but of something maybe either a piece of clothing or something they're holding or maybe something they've worked on and just look to give them one sincere compliment about something that, again, is not their physical 
characteristics. Okay, I'll try. So you I'll see someone, that. either something they've done or something they have, and that's all fair game, all uh, right? Okay, I And like just give that. one sincere compliment. And then if that worked, you just cut it off there and bail. Great. All right, great. Great. Um, all right, let's go talk to the implement. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And um, uh, Captain Cheddar, uh, you have ones in melee, and so you may ask for one boon of me. She looks up and says, I have two things that I dearly want. And one is for myself, and um, one is for the, uh, the Dairy Islands. I would ask the Emperor's leave to request a favor from uh, the Pontifex that um, as a youth, uh, the, uh, the young Lord uh, Stilton Cordo uh, swore some holy vows uh, as he was a youngest son to enter the clergy and his uh, older brothers died at sea. I would ask that he be released from his vows so that he could wed his sweetheart, uh, the Lady Primsy Cold Bottle, Duchess of Lacrimoire. <coughs> the uh, Emperor nods and says, I will release under these circumstances would be eminently least ever. Um, you guys step out, Hannibal steps out with you, looks at you, sort of nods knowingly at you, and claps you on the shoulder and says, All right, well, the council will benefit from your wisdom for many long years to come. Thanks. And thanks for the pointer. I think it really worked. I actually think it kind of did. Yeah. Right? That was, felt it was good. good. Yeah. It's infrastructure. Good. That was pretty good. Um, uh, can I ask you something about Primzy? I didn't know that she had someone that she was romantically into. I she did. I that she did. Uh, she's had her uh, sweetheart set on um, the young Stilton Cordo, who has wooed her very powerfully since she was, I would say, quite a younger maiden than she is now. But um, she, uh, he had this sort of religious vow that he had taken. He was promised to the clergy, and so he promised purity and celibacy when he was a very young lad. And um, when he became heir, it became an impediment. And so they couldn't declare formal courtship. They couldn't declare, and Primsy couldn't be promised. And there were other suitors that Primsy had to turn away because... So this is sort of a way for um, the Bolbian church to get into politics more directly. Right. I don't know if you've noticed, but they're pretty involved as it stands. More so, then. I suppose so. You could say that. And you're yeah. close with Stilton Cordo? Who, myself? Yeah. No, he's a little punts. I don't care for a little lad, but he makes Primsy happy. Do you care about Primsy? Uh, give me a charisma check with disadvantage. So bad. Um, two. Um, she is still for a moment, um, steps into your personal space and says, we're not on a fucking chariot right now. You're not going to unhorse me like you did the Lady Plumbeline, you understand? You call my honor into question again, or my loyalty to my duchess, and it won't be words we share, Sir Theobald. Have I made myself clear? Crystal. She whips around with her captain's uh, coat and walks away down the hall. Uh, Sprinkle goes, uh, and you see that there are little, like, uh, white and yellow and blue banners, and like, or white and orange and blue uh, banners, uh, and there's some little confetti there uh, going up, uh, and you see uh, Stilton and Primsy being wed on the deck of the ship, and it's a captain's wedding by Annabelle. Um, I could crash away. Uh, we should sneak. You hear uh, joyous cheering. Yeah. I now pronounce you man and wife. Cheer. Yak and sprinkle over here, Stefan. I'm going to bend the familiar rules a little bit just to allow you guys to hear what happens on the deck of the ship. Uh, sprinkle hidden away in the shadows. Uh, and Yak circling overhead. Hear Annabelle shouting 
angrily going, Right, well, someone tell me where the hell Morris and Manterey are. We're going to lose the tide if we don't set sail right now. Um, you hear a messenger come up and start talking to her, and the messenger goes, like, uh, one of her sailors goes, My lady, the emperor is dead, and the Candia has declared war. The, the, the king Amathar is a false king. He's been exiled from the church, and... Duke Joran Jawbreaker rules in Candia. You see, uh, Annabelle is just stunned and says, what does this mean? She says, I don't know. There is no one atop the Concordant throne. The Concord hangs in the balance in open war with Candia. Annabelle says, what do we do? And you see that they, she turns to look at Primsy. Annabelle, Primsy looks at Annabelle and goes, um, right, I as Duchess of, of Lacrimore, I, I, um, I, I, uh, well, we, we should, our allies in, in Candy, uh, if we were to, the Concord prevents, um, and you see that she just starts shaking, Annabelle goes over, puts a hand on her, another sailor walks up and says, um, milady, you see there is a stained with like like a deep yellow curdled milk which you recognize as blood uh, a letter comes up and says milady uh, from Sir Brie and she opens the letter looks at it and says we need to leave at once anchors up away lower the sails um, and you guys feel the ship begin to move and head out to open water or open milk in this case. <laughs> the ship is boarded by Imperial soldiers. Uh, you hear voice of uh, Imperial, Vegetanian, and Cerisian soldiers march through the hold. Um, they walk over. You hear the voice of Commander Grassini say, here in these barrels, check these barrels. How about here in these crates? Um, you see that uh, you hear Captain Cheddar say, right, these crates are nailed down. You'd have to be an ogre to open one of these, all right? No one could have gotten into these. Here, try your best to pry one open. Uh, you see that Grassini tries to open one absolutely can't. And Annabelle says, you're going to keep us past our point of sale. We'll have to go back in harbor for the night if you open every one of these crates. Uh, Grassini says, all right, they are impossible to open. Check the barrels, leave the crates. Uh, and Grassini and his soldiers take off and you are not found. Uh, um, you see, uh, uh, yeah, 12 sailors and Annabelle come thundering in, weapons drawn. Uh, Annabelle looks and says, We invoke the ancient uh, concord between Candia and the Dairy Islands. Hey, it's us, the princesses. You gave us this? Yeah, we're friends, remember? Don't you remember I gave you that cheese board? That right now you're two? five stowaways! Wanted fugitives, endangering myself, my crew, and my duchess. Wanted by the Imperial Army. Yeah, That's pretty cool, what... huh? Give me a persuasion check. What did you say? Pretty cool, huh? Uh, that's a 21. <gasps> she holds her saber at you. Like, right, that's pretty cool. She takes out a letter and says, this is a letter from Sir Morris Bree, saying that a spirit spoke to him and told him where Manta Ray Jack was. Right now he's hiding out in the city, having rescued Manta Ray. Oh, thank so goodness. Good I, I tried to save him, but I, I dropped so my thieves. So you're taking credit for this, you're a spirit? I message her. Yeah, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> she drops it and stumbles backwards, amazed. You, in the middle of fleeing, gave a message to Sir Morris to save Manta Ray. Yes, he was a good man. He is a good man. I wanted to save him. I tried to, but it was too late. 
the pen died, and so did my best friend, Preston. Uh, Primsy walks over um, and uh, puts her arms around you and takes you into a deep hug. <laughs> there, there. I am so sorry for the loss of your chancellor and of your noble steed. She looks up at Annabelle. Annabelle looks down at her. Um, I, I think I'm going to actually ask for a group persuasion check right now. I just want you, you're not, no one's saying anything, just you guys standing there. Nine. 21. 12. Um, seven. Okay. Eight. Okay. I got a 21. Um, you guys are bloodied and a mess. Annabelle sort of glares at you, Theo. Looks around and says, of all the ships you could have stowed away on, why the Colby? I'll be very clear. The Dairy Islands can do nothing to save Candia. We're not asking you to do anything. We just need to get to the, the Great Stone Candy Mountains. By helping you, we declare war on every kingdom in Calorum. Please don't make us make you. Nobody needs to know. Please don't make me. I understand here. I know you might be some kind of witch or sorceress. The rumors about how things go in Candia are far and wide on the open sea. Now, you might get to me before my sword gets to you, but understand that my crew will finish what I start. And if it doesn't, then you'll be here with a bunch of dead sailors on the open sea, and it won't be very long before you find the end you're trying to avoid. We mean you're no right. violence. Uh, Your daughter might. I don't. She doesn't. I'm just scared. We're all scared. It's been a crazy day um, and we came to this ship because of the history that our people have of the war and every day I regret listening to my father and not being there for the Derry Islands when we should have been and we aim to find the man who helped you when you were in need and support him in protecting Candia. He's my dad, and I need to get back there so that we can go fucking kill that carrot. Annabelle puts her hand through her hair. I mean, you look at Annabelle and Primsy and see two people that are looking at an array of terrible options. Um, you see that uh, she looks and says, King Jawbreaker came to the defense of the Dairy Islands when no one else would. Prince Liam, you have our respect. And I know at least that you had the decency to see a good sailor saved. I'm now a war guy. Well, war has a Funny way of making us all war guys, I suppose. Mm. We're not Imperial troops, and we don't need to do the Empire's dirty work. So we're not going to fight you. We're not going to execute you. We're not going to do anything like that because it's not our place nor our task. However, any aid we provide to you could be construed as an act of war against the Concord. So you understand how our hands are tied. Aye? Seeing as we can no longer take the course we were planning because we are down one crate of drinking milk, we will make the fastest course for Lacrimore. You will be our guests and our prisoners until such time as we arrive at Lacrimore, where we will assemble the Council of the Duchess to decide then what is to be done. Can this be agreed upon by all parties? I don't see that we have a choice. 
I don't see that we have one either. I hope you understand why we put you in this position. Somewhere, a bloody Sir Morris Bree is hanging on to that rascal Jack. And that's thanks to you. You see, Primsy speaks up and says, and I am married to the love of my life because of you. If you had not given Annabelle that boon, then I could not be wed to my sweetheart. I think Annabelle would have won it either way. Uh, Annabelle looks at you and says, flattery will get you nowhere, but I do appreciate it. Okay. So uh, got me a little somewhere. <laughs> you see, she shakes her head and says, right, well, we're all doomed. <clears throat> um, let's see these prisoners are taken to um, some finer quarters, fed and clothed, and um, we don't need any chained hands on a moving ship, so I trust that you will stay by our side until this can be resolved in a fair and just manner. Thank you. All right. Get them fed. Hits the uh, wall of the ship, and you guys go uh, upstairs. Uh, you go find Annabelle, Liam. Uh, what do you say? Annabelle's up on the deck of the ship. She's not. The, she's at the helm. Hello, Annabelle. <clears throat> Your haircut looks fresh, and it's really masculine yet feminine in a way that's strong yet tender. Give me a charisma check with advantage. <laughs> a 16, 14. I'm negative two to charisma. <laughs> she goes, right, well that's what I was going for, so I appreciate that. Hell yeah. Look, we got fucking creamed. We were in the cathedral and people poured in trying to kill us. We were completely set up. As you know, I lost my best friend and we just don't have time to go to the Dairy Islands. We need you to drop us off at the Great Stone Candy Mountain. I'll have my dad, Yorin Jawbreaker, personally thank you and shake your hand <laughs> and sign anything that you want him to sign. He's got a lot of merch. <laughs> He's got a lot of books about Kama Sutra. And between him and his partners and his partner's partners, there are over 35 sexy singles of any sexuality or gender that you could desire. And you would get eaten alive upside down by that group because they would find you so attractive. <laughs> Eaten alive, Annabelle. They would turn you inside out and eat you alive. Can I hex Annabelle just to give her disadvantage on whatever throw she's about to make? I will allow Hex the, to, to to give um, Liam here. Hmm. I, I think that you get advantage for boldness and disadvantage for madness here. <laughs> Give me a straight <laughs> persuasion check. Oh, okay. okay, come on. <sighs> Four. She looks at you and says, just stand still, all right? Uh, she got rolled a nat 20 and a nat one uh, with the disadvantage that you gave her. Misses horribly in a slap as you lean back because she stumbles as she looks uh, behind her. Um, uh, she looks behind her and says, hey, what's, what's that? Um, uh, she takes out a spyglass, makes a perception check, um, and says, strange. Uh, and she goes and walks off the deck. I follow her. You hear a crack of thunder. And little droplets of milk begin to rain down from on high as the wind picks up. Annabelle shouts up and says, um, Night! Uh, Primsy, you better get down from there! And uh, as the house blue ships begin to close, you see arrows firing from the house blue ships. 
on to. I cover Primzy. Uh, you see that they, uh, the ships begin to catch up. Uh, Annabelle starts to shout, Lower the sails! Full speed! Full speed! The, uh, you see that these uh, cheese women start running up, right? Captain! Captain! House Blue! They're attacking! Um, the fire into the night. Annabelle keeps yelling, um, Hold on to the rigging! Hold on! Um, as shit begins to descend into the yogurt. Uh, that is going to be uh, Annabelle, um, who uh, is going to continue, she's gonna use her action to try and keep the ship from going any further down than it's already going uh, at the helm, but uh, yells out for Primzy. Primzy! My cousin! Amathar, that's you. Uh, I look back to Annabelle. I say, Annabelle, uh, how long can you hold the ship? Right, she's, she's bound for the bottom, but if we can get another ship, I can get the crew over there and we can make way. All right, so uh, so hold this ship, take another ship. Aye, that's the plan. If, if you go over the edge, I'll send the ladies after you. <laughs> All right, ladies! Uh... <laughs> um, that's now going to be... Um... Annabelle, who looks at this sinking ship. Annabelle. Oh. She looks at the Colby, the flagship of House Cheddar, um, looks to her friend behind her who nods, um, and she is going to make an acrobatics check. Nat 20. Yeah. Damn, how many Nat 20s are going to roll it's today? It's crazy. Just enough. Um, she's going to go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55. With a bonus dash action, um, she's going to run up. Um, uh, uh, you see uh, Annabelle Cheddar look at her sinking ship, turn to her friend who nods and lifts the wounded warrior uh, in her arms. Uh, everyone having deserted the ship, uh, she will not jump into the other ship while there are still people on her ship. So she runs along the gunnel, runs up uh, along the side of the ship, springs through the storm to the crow's nest, runs fleet of foot and sh uh, as sure as can be down the broken mast and hits the person in front of Theo for 18 points of damage uh, with her rapier. <laughs> you see that um, uh, in a flash of lightning, Annabelle looks down to you and sees Primsy look back up at her. Uh, Annabelle looks down to you and salutes with her uh, sword out to one side from the, the crow's mast of the sinking ship. This is one alliance that really paid off for you, huh? <laughs> uh, this whole thing collapses, falls into the water, and with it goes uh, Annabelle. Uh, into the tangy deep. 18 on the dice. Nice. Uh, Annabelle, po incredible, uh, pops her head up, um, grabs onto this barrel um, and starts screaming. Now she's got to make a strength check, just DC 10. 11, she makes it, she is not pulled, she kicks her, her legs crazily in the water, yeah. screams out, just made three saves in a row, uh, and is not sucked by the current out to sea. Um, I feel very represented by her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this guy's gonna... Annabelle is going to make athletics check. She leaps to the side of the ship. Right, yeah. uh, right here. Captain. I say, it's good to see you again. Right, it's good to see you too, Len. Something's changed and I have to say, I think I like it. Thank you. Can you maybe steer this boat? I'm really guessing. <laughs> I, I can. Um, uh, and she's going to use her bonus action to leap up here and take the helm from Leon. Nice. You sail the La Fondue off. Uh, you successfully sail through the storm. Um, and as the storm passes and the water is even out, uh, Annabelle has lashed herself to the helm, um, looks over at the rest of the crew and says, Right, me and... 
Catalan can help the rest of this. All of you can head downstairs and get your rest. It should be smooth after the storm. Where are we, are we still en route to the Dairy Islands, or perhaps in light of certain events that happened, we might be headed to the Candy Mountains. 35 of my sexy parents <laughs> want to but spread also, you I say like my cousin. soft cheese on a cracker. I think I'm like that kind of drunk sleep, so I just go up to Annabelle and I go, 35 moms, dads are gonna bang you out. <laughs> Right. This has gone from being an author to a threat. <laughs> and then I fall asleep right there on the deck. <laughs> the deck just collapsed. Uh, you guys awaken the next morning. Um, the bulb shines brightly in the sky uh, on a pure, glistening, white, milky ocean. Sailors have gathered on deck to have a funeral at sea for their fallen comrade. Um, you see that as they do, Annabelle presides over, speaks a couple words in Lacra. She kept the faith. She kept the old ways. The ways of House Cheddar. I release you into the breast of the ocean. Keep sharp, sailor. Uh, and away she goes. I'd like to take the milk silk uh, banner that um, Frimsy made for us, and I'd like to uh, tie it to my collar. Um, you tie the milk silk to your collar and Annabelle turns and smiles at you. As you all awaken your first long rest in quite a while, mm -hmm. um, Captain Annabelle looks to you. Uh, the Duchess Cold Bottle is still asleep below decks. She was making some death saves there for a little while. Uh, but Captain Annabelle comes up to you. You guys are fed a sailor's breakfast. At least this ship was stocked for a full voyage. Um, Annabelle looks and says, Right, so the good news is we made it through the storm and um, we are uh, on our way, but our way is a little bit lost. We were blown quite out far to sea, so we are somewhere right now in the far west of the Dairy Sea. Um, uh, we've been blown off course. Um, to make it back to Lacrimore, We'd probably not get there till the 18th day of bright dusk. I, I mean, I, I was pretty sure that maybe our path had changed anyways. I think that that might be very likely. <laughs> uh, Annabelle speaks up and says, right, well, look, let's start with what happened after the tournament and what happened at the cathedral. We, I got... I, Sir Morris wrote his letter with very little amount of time left, so I didn't get much, but what happened? Quite simply, uh, I was married to a commoner from the Dairy Islands, uh, and they used that uh, to uh, excommunicate me from the, from the church. But this is after a Bobian church assassination attempt on my father's life. That's, oh, right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You were you were excommunicated for adultery alone. That seems like a. Well, and you, well, mm -hmm. um, technically for um, breaking the oath of marriage. Right. You entered into a false oath when you married Queen Kira Melinda. Yeah. Annabelle looks up and says, "The Queen Kira Melinda was wed before to whom?" My sister, she was promised to Lazuli, and uh, in order to, when she passed and alliances needed to be held, uh, I was expected to marry her. Right, and you never, and you never said anything to Cara Melinda, nor to your sisters? Oh, my sisters, no. But it was during the war, and the thought was that it would be handled when the war was over, and also that it wouldn't be a problem because I was so far down the line of succession. But when the war came to an end and my sister lay dead on the ground, 
I was the only one left to take the throne. Did you not try to find Catherine Guy? Uh, attempts were made right after the war, but we never could. Uh, Annabelle speaks up across his arms and says, well, we already know that the Dairy Islands were hit perhaps harder than any other kingdom during the Ravening War. It's not uncommon for entire islands to have been slaughtered, nor was it uncommon for entire islands to flee when marauders of Meatlanders or Serasians would come. A commoner, someone with the, the surname Guy, would probably have had the sense to flee there, especially if there was reason for them to think they would have been a target. Being married to royalty in the midst of a war can be a dangerous occupation of sorts. That was the thought. Well, there is a difference between Candian scouts looking through the Dairy Islands and Dairy Islanders themselves. There are small spits of cheese land out in the milk where only our ships know to find them. So if Catherine Gee is out there somewhere, we can set sail a ship to find her. Oh, so sorry. What? The Dairy Islands will help you in this regard, and if it were to be a point in your standing with the church to have that marriage be annulled, we will help you find Catherine Gee, if only to even ask questions. You seem to be, it would be strategic, the finding of Catherine Gee for the annulment. Right, well, at least the annulment would mean that you could enter into a marriage with Kara Melinda now. And, you know, it would not erase the past 18, 20 years of your life, but some could be made whole and right in the eyes of the church. I mean, that's worth a shot. Um, she nods and says, right, well, we can send out scouts and ships as fast as we can when we return to Lacrimore. Annabelle looks at you and says, no, wait a minute, so, so the Lady Plumbeline named Senator Chibata as the successor, so why isn't Chibata on the concordant throne? Because he, uh, she lied. How did people find out? How did because how did, of the book, book of, of Lazuli? No, the book of um, Citrina. 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 Uh, you see that that she says. So wait. So, all right. So so. She, if she was working with the Pontifex, and she said Senator Chiabata, and then touched the book, and then said it wasn't him. Wouldn't she have known that this was the game the whole time? Was this not, maybe this was a plot to prevent Senator Chiabata from being the one person that we could confirm was not to be successor? Oh, this is making me a head hurt. Aye, politics is bad. Uh, you see that- This is why I resisted the, you know, necessity to rule. Um, you see that Annabelle says, if only we knew who the emperor had actually named successor before he died. We do. Well, we do. We were there. Oh, yeah, it's that. me. So you are the Concordant Emperor? Oh, I should in be. I mean, in theory. theory. Did you not, when you had your hand on the book, did you? Did they ask you? No, they asked me about. No. That's oh, when shit. they swapped it in the question. I should have said it. it I should have just an ambush. the question. <sighs> yeah, they, they got us. Yeah, that broccoli lady yes. sucks. Yeah, that she fucking suck. carrot. I tried to kill her. I mean, uh, we tried to kill her. We, we yeah, came yeah, close. We got to close. close. Everyone yeah, we got easy, a good hit right? it. So the plan is to kill everyone no. in the mm. church. Yes. yes. You absolutely. see the two the two dairy ladies start to kind of draw <laughs> a little bit no, back. I'm going to slice no, that carrot's actually, face we're off. We're going to slice the carrot. Annabelle says, right, well, we can comb the dairy islands for Catherine Gee and for this father, Belford. Sir Morris was able to rescue Manta Ray, so we should at least be able to get some answers there, hopefully. Um, and if we can get you, if we, there's some way to get that relic, to get the Book of St. Citrina, we could at least confirm that you are the Emperor of the Concord and that any act of war against Candia was done without the say so of the emperor. Right. Who would, we would have to maybe use the book, obviously, to prove that you, but maybe with Plumbelina as well, right? She mm. was the other person in the room. Aye. And the, the pontifex herself. Yes. Head of the church, though she might be, she is not above the law of the bulb. 
Yeah, make it. As you sail east through the Dairy Sea, um, Captain Annabelle Cheddar uh, arrives at a certain point in the islands and says, right, I'll leave it in your careful hands. We can sail to Lacrimore or we can bring you up straight to the Kolo River um, and to the port there. What do you Kola think River. River. Mm -hmm. we go to the Kolo River and drink use, some milk coke. You send uh, Ooh, you send out allies to find Catherine Gee and upon receiving anything, you let us know. And as you guys sail into port, uh, you see that um, uh, Annabelle runs down and gets a little banner underneath House Cheddar and a small banner of the House of Rocks flies up uh, underneath the flag on Great. the La Fondue. Do we have any allies to the north? Uh, perhaps we can get some people from the Dairy Islands to protect um, You see that uh, Annabelle says, right, we'll return to Lacrimore, muster the Dairy Islands, and we'll... The Dairy Seas shall not be safe for any ships coming for Candia. Thank you. Annabelle and the Duchess Coldbottle bid you all a fond farewell as they sail back to Lacrimore, your allies in the wars to come. Um, Ruby, you go to the docks uh, and you find Annabelle Cheddar with uh, sort of looking around at the chaos and devastation, but also kind of, you can see her compartmentalizing and looking at that and then also realizing that she's about to go off to war mm -hmm. and doesn't have time to deal with this. Uh, Annabelle, I think you're really cool. You, you also lost your titles, your lands, your power. How did you, I guess what I'm asking, this is bad, right? I'm not just blinded by this, I don't know, jealousy or anger or you see that she puts a hand on your shoulder and says, Ruby, I don't... I'm sorry, I'm not sure what you're asking me. Is the world bad? Is this bad? What do you mean? The sack of the city? Aye, it is bad. Aye. You're not wrong. My father, the Prince Tartar Cheddar, told me that he would disown me of my title and the throne of Lacrimore my future as the princess of the Dairy Islands, unless I wed and produced an heir. I had no interest in doing that. So I chose to be a captain, take my ship, my crew, head to the open sea. I was not willing to be less than free. And so I gave up power and I think in a way I gave up responsibility as well. She looks around and says, I could have lived a life of misery and perhaps the Dairy Islands would have recovered more from the war if I had. How do you see those scales though? Your freedom on one side and your joy versus the world and I'll never know if it was the right choice. But I do know that if I am to be free and to look to the horizon with clear eyes, then I need to reckon with this truth. The things I didn't decide were as much my decisions as the things I did. And what I turned my back on was my responsibility too, even as I left them behind. So I'll take my freedom, but I won't take it without reckoning what it cost. I need to speak with your father. Okay, I'll tell him. She nods. Um, Amathar. Mm -hmm. um, Annabelle comes up to you. Where do you think you are on the ship? Uh, the hill, or uh, that's the front. Up on the prow, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. up on the, the prow. prow. Prow of the ship. Um, she walks up to you. Um, you're alone up here. It's just you and Annabelle. Um, she looks at you and says, uh, Your Majesty, um, I know we have... Uh, 
yeah. um, Amathar. I, uh, I know we have, much has changed and there's now bigger fish to fry, yeah. so to speak. Um, we found, um, well, we found Catherine Gee. Oh. Or, or I should say, uh, Amadar, we, we found where she is buried. Oh. Um. Well, where was she? She was in a small grave on the, uh, the Isle of Crumble, up in the far west. Um, she's uh, buried there in a small graveyard of a Bulbian church. And um, it was a, we weren't sure, that her, her name was there, but Catherine Gee is a rather common name. So mm -hmm. we checked in with the church and there was a father, Belford's Buttercream, who had noted her death um, there in the ledger. Um, she passed away many long years ago, actually. Um, she passed away. See, she opens the scroll and looks at it and says, she passed away on the, uh, the 12th day of harvest dusk, 1196. Um, hey, uh, thank you so much for doing that. Um, I think I'm... Uh, that's, that's, that's important to know. She was not a woman of letters, but Father Buttercream... had some writings on her and her confiding in him. And um, she was taken with illness later in life after giving your daughter away. And um, she had become quite scared, I think, of retribution from your family or she had become quite religious and mm -hmm notes about her daughter and such, but she was not a woman of letters, so left nothing behind. Um, I'm sorry for your loss, as strange as it may sound. And I know it's been almost 20 years, but... Thank you. Uh, I should, uh, I should go tell Sacharina. Mm -hmm. 